Well, it's morning. We're an hour from getting into Newcastle and you might be able to see it through the window, I'm not sure. But that is England. You can just see coming into view on the horizon there. So it's bricky time, a cup of coffee and chocky croissant, that'll do me nicely. This is our last bricky that we're having on our trip. So, I don't know, that's it. We're going to eat breakfast, we'll go down, we'll find Wilbur. I've forgotten which deck I parked him on, but I'm figuring that uh, everybody's going to be heading to the same place because I think there's only uh, one car deck in use. And we'll fire him up and we'll ride the, I don't know, it's probably an hour and a half home because I'll take the scenic route. I'm not going to go down the A1, I'll go down the A68. Why not? It's Sunday morning, so the traffic should be pretty quiet and we'll at least get a little bit more scenery into ourselves before I head home for 14 days of enforced quarantine. So that's it. I'm going to sit here, watch Newcastle come into view. I might pop out on deck, get a bit of footage of that and I'm going to have my breakfast. Cheers. <laughs> that we're off the boat and Wilbur's got his tyres back onto UK soil. It's a bit dreary and damp and cold. It's certainly not the weather we were hoping to get but there we are. This is the last hour home so we'll queue up. It's amazing that the UK border force can manage to make such long queues with such few people but they always seem to do it. But we're soon back on the road. We'll get ourselves out of the port here and then I can start heading across around the outside of Newcastle and down the A1 a bit. Seeing as I hadn't seen my mother for a month and I knew that I was going into quarantine for two weeks and I was going past her house on the way home, I thought I'll just call in and give a wave through the window because it'll be the last chance I get to do this for a while. But of course, I go up there, knock on the door, and she's out walking the dog. Anyway, these things happen, right? Let's get to Ingleton. Ah, after that, she's not in. Right, home to isolate. <laughs> It was worth a try.
Well there we are, I can't really believe that we're riding back through Ingleton and we're almost home. It's always good to get home, but yep, we could have certainly done a longer trip if we wanted. So that's it, there's the dreaded Ford Ranger that always breaks down, but we're back home. Well done Wilbur! We did it! 6,105 kilometres, 24 days, several breakdowns, but we did it. The Arctic Challenge sorted. So with that it's time to park Wilbur in the workshop and we'll have a think about the next adventure. Well that's it, that's me and Wilbur in isolation for 14 days but it can give us a chance to do a bit of work, fix some of the stuff, give him a service, get sorted out and do a lot of video editing. So that's it. That's what an epic journey to the Arctic Circle and back on an aerial square four looks like. It was an adventure. Loved it. Where next will be? Let's get the map out and have a look. So with that of course we shouldn't lose sight of where we did this trip and we wanted to get to the Arctic Circle taking in as many scenic routes as we possibly could. So here's a reminder of our scenic route scorecard. And of course there's a few eights and nines in there, they're the ones to look for and they're the ones that we really enjoyed riding. But looking back at this amazing trip, we've been through traffic, we've been through snow, the Tron fell VN, we've had rain that was so unbelievable it was running rivers across the road, the forests and the dirt tracks that we've been on, the Trollstegen of course with its spectacular hairpins and waterfalls. The run up the Helgeland Skystern. The Songefellit Road with the snow and the crystal clear lakes at times. The breakdown in the tunnel, poor Wilbur. And of course pulling it apart in Egersund. We saw our first moose on the side of the road. And then we saw the enormous chrome moose at Atna. Of course ferry journeys were a part of this, 20 ferries in total this whole trip, including the one with the door stuck. There was the iconic bridges, there was the rocks and the views at Precastolen, and of course the scenery at the top of the Tron Felvien. It really was eyes out of our heads nearly every day. And the Rondan route of course was one of our favourites with the forests and the lakes. I think we really did try and make the best of the scenery that we did and getting up above the Arctic Circle. That is the photo we set out to get and of course we did that on the way back actually. But if there's one photo that sums up the trip for us, I think it's this one from the Tron VM. What a great journey and what a great trip. Who knows where we'll be next? Join us and find out. 